In the deer woods, you get out what you put in. Whether a weekend warrior or a year-long fanatic, in the end, you'll earn every inch. For us, that's a 365-day-a-year grind, scouting, setting up, making it a lifestyle. There's no words that can describe what deer hunting means to some, but a picture is worth a thousand words. And now, for nearly a decade and over 100 episodes, we've shared what it means to us in film. And more importantly, we've had the opportunity to watch, hunt, and just enjoy some of the biggest and oldest deer they call the Whitetail Woods home. This is Season 8. Partridge's Canadian Whitetail is proudly brought to you by Ozonics, undetectable, undeniable. Elite Archery, the world's most shootable bow. Stealth Cam, proven reliability, proven quality, proven performance. Excalibur Crossbow, the most trusted crossbows on the planet. Big and J long range attractants, the aroma is super strong, the range is super long. Nocturnal lighted knocks, switch on accuracy. The heater bodysuit, number one in cold weather hunting gear. Hoyman, your land, your legacy. Black Eagle Arrows, superior carbon technology. Central Boiler, outdoor wood furnaces, performance and value by design. The Whitetail Institute of North America. Under Armour, go where you don't belong. And by Limb Saver, products that work. Sometimes, even though hunting is our life, our life can't just be hunting. Family, kids, school, all has to continue. And quite often, the majority of that burden is often placed on a certain person. In my family's life, that person has been my wife, Rochelle. Now, Rochelle's a dedicated hunter with several great deer to her credit. But that has largely taken a back seat the last few years. In 2013, we moved and began building a new small farm for our family. And with the children, sports, as well as working, it left very little time for Rochelle to be in the deer woods. Rather, she was managing day-to-day -day life while I was in the deer woods. Rochelle was at home, being the glue that held our family together. After getting settled in our new home, I made a promise to myself that the next great deer that we found that lived close to home where she could put her time in would be her deer to hunt. Little did I know when going to check out a new property with my son Magnus on our first scouting mission, after getting permission from a much too generous landowner, we would find and film a deer who over the years would grow to legendary proportions. Only matched by the ups and downs, Rochelle's patience to let that deer grow and her eventual dedication to hunting only that deer. This week and next, I'm honored to share with you the story of one incredible woman and one incredible whitetail that we simply called the Creek Buck. Heading out scouting is easily my favorite thing, especially with fresh permission on a property close to home from a generous landowner and new friend. And nothing beats sharing that with our children. This day, my co-pilot was our son, Magnus. Long day, I guess. Arriving late, we snuck up a fence rope just in time to watch a nice frame buck enter the field. Being a new property and a new deer, we did not recognize him and made a plan to get some Big and J out and a trail camera up to have a closer look. Actually, me and my son Magnus were just out doing some scouting. We we're gonna throw a camera up, and we came out late. Had some deer had already come out to this off off field, and there's a big, big buck in the group. We walked down this fence line just about a mile to try to get a closer look. They're about 500 yards still, and uh, I'd like to get closer to get some better footage of him, but he's big, and I don't want to bump him off this field. for the deer. You put it down, it's for the deer. If we could only have seen the future that evening filming that buck, to know what he was, what he'd become, and the journey that we were about to embark on. This segment has been brought to you by the Heater Bodysuit, 
The heater bodysuit is the ultimate cold weather hunting garment that allows you to stay on stand longer and sit comfortably. The heater bodysuit. You stay warm or your money back. Having gotten some Big and J out on our trail cam wrap to have a closer look, when we returned to check, we had dozens of pictures of the buck, and now up close we could see that he was a great deer, but an up-and-comer. Long beams, a nice frame, and extra points, we decided not to target the buck, and hoped that he'd survive another year. We had gotten lucky and the buck had survived the 2014 season and grew tremendously in 2015. Now with a massive typical frame and a few extras, we decided to pass again one more year. And in 2016, with another year's age, the bucket grew again in leaps, adding more normal points, some width, and a lot of character. And we decided that this would be the year to set up and hope Rochelle might get a chance on what we now felt was a 180 inch class buck. To get Rochelle enough time in the stand for a chance, we knew it would be a team effort, and after a couple of slow sits with me, I had taken to watching the kids in the evening, and Steve had taken over running the camera with Rochelle. We're in a spot here where we've got history on this, uh, this buck. He's a mainframe, 5x5. Five five. He's got uh, splits on one side. He's a really cool deer, really nice looking deer. Up to this point, uh, her hubby's been sitting with her, but he's uh, got the daughter off at hockey tonight, so I'm stepping up and uh, sitting with Rochelle on film here tonight. He's uh, he's pretty cool, pretty interesting deer, and that's our target buck here tonight, so we're uh, hoping he makes an appearance. several deer moving through, after several sits with Steve, the creek buck does not make an appearance. We just got in and settled with Rochelle. She had her lucky caravan tonight. And uh, it's actually interesting because things have been so busy with the show and building an acreage and all this kind of stuff. It's been two years since Rochelle's been out hunting. She's been on a couple nights this year already with Steve filming her, but and Rochelle's after a big deer. It's a big, not typical. We call him the creek buck. So we'll see what happens. Last week, you sat two nights. They didn't see him. They didn't see him. They thought they seen him one night when they were walking out. I checked the trail camera, and he had been in here in good light the two days previous, the day before they sat. So took to not hit the right wind, and uh, we'll give it a try. With her lucky cameraman not being very lucky, deer movement slow, and for the next month Rochelle sits with Steve, still with no encounters with the creek buck. It was now November, with just days left in the season. After another slow night right at last light, it happens. The creek buck makes an appearance. Now, up close and in person, Rochelle and Steve are faced with one tough decision. And with just days left in the season, they decide to roll the dice, hope the deer survives, and pass on the creek buck for another year, putting an end to 2016, and a wrap on a season of sits. This segment has been brought to you by Glendale, the only 3D target with a replaceable four-sided core. And now you can get 15% off all items by entering promo code WHITETAIL15 at Faradine.com. 
Glendale, the biggest and toughest 3D targets in the universe. This segment has been brought to you by Fog Pod. More than just a shooting rest. Fog Pod. Prepare for the unknown. After making the tough call to pass the Creek Buck in 2016, it was now June 2017 and scouting was in full speed. This night while out with Josh, after seeing several good bucks, we headed to check on the Creek Buck for the first time of the year. And much to my delight, he was alive and right there in his usual spot feeding in the alfalfa. Though only June, it was apparent that he was going to show us just what potential that he had, already sporting 14 visible times, more mass, and with three more months of growing, we'd let him just be, hoping that throughout the summer, he would not get bumped from the field. We replaced our binoculars with a stealth cam and could not believe it as the summer went on. The creek buck continued to grow, a lot, and month by month we watched the creek buck develop not only into a big deer, not just Rochelle's dream buck, but a world-class whitetail. This we call this the creek line. Well, I found at this deer quite a few days last year until we almost ran out of time. And then right towards the end of the season, Steve filmed the deer. He came in late one night and see a little bit of footage of them when they're out. And I think there was five or six days left in the season. And we looked at the footage and everybody decided just to leave it go and let him go one more year. It was the first time that year we had a good look at him. And I would say that it's paid off for her <laughs> because he's a giant this year and she said she's going to kill him this year. <laughs> In and settled, knowing it may take days, weeks or months for an encounter with the creek buck, nerves were still on edge every moment just knowing that that buck was there. Steadfast and dedicated, Rochelle been hunting the creek buck every time the conditions were right, still with no encounters. But today the deer were moving early, and this September evening was about to be permanently etched into our memories for a lifetime. The does looked east, and from the bottom appears this nice younger 4x4, our first encounter with him for the season, and he was the deer that the creek buck had been traveling with all summer long. As the buck hit the big and jay and headed for the fields, more does arrived, and a flash of antler from the bottom revealed another buck making his way. It's a surreal moment to realize that a world-class 200 plus inch whitetail, the target deer, was right there and headed straight for us. A massive body, big neck, watching this old buck in these woods of central Saskatchewan, in this moment, we were living every deer hunter's dream. This segment brought to you by AAE. Innovation and integrity is in our blood. Quality and dependability is in our products. As the creek buck closed the distance, this year there was no question if Rochelle was going to pass or not. 
now within 20 yards of a world-class whitetail. Rochelle was ready to finally take her shot. Rochelle draws, the buck turns broadside perfect, and just at the moment of truth, a fawn walks directly behind him, forcing Rochelle to hold and wait until it steps clear. And in that moment, with that one arrow, our deer hunting dream had turned to a nightmare with a clean miss. Three days later, after midnight, I snuck in to tear the blind down and relocate it, and at the last moment I decided to check the stealth cam first, and what I found, again, would change our hunt. We had caught a lucky break bigger than the Grand Canyon, and that was that the creek buck was still making his way through, though I was quick to warn Rochelle not to get a false sense of hope, as history has shown us a second encounter with these big old bugs can be anywhere between tough to impossible. I came out this late because everything we know about this deer by midnight and after midnight, he's always out into the fields by then, so it'd be the safest time to go in there. And uh, I walked a long way around, it's about a mile and a half to get in the backside. I came in to move the blind, and then just before I collapsed the blind, I decided I'd go over and pull the trail camera first and check the card, and he was back a few hours after she missed him, and he's been there every day since. Not in good light, but he's been through there. That deer obviously doesn't know what happened. We've only got a few days left in the season, in the early season. She's gonna kill that deer. The last sit here wasn't, it was kind of a good sit. So anyway, uh, three days later, I came in here to tear it down. And uh, before I tore the blind on, I checked the card. And he'd came back here to the Big and J two hours after she shot. So we decided with a short amount of time that we would hunker in and uh, hope that he doesn't know what happened. The three days between when we missed and I checked the card, he was here every day in bad light. I'm gonna be quiet because the deer just walked in. This evening, with the deer moving well, they all alarm, and then we spot the culprit. At any other spot, he'd have been a dead dog, but given the scenario, we just let him pass and pack up to head out for the night. And it would be six more days, until conditions were close enough to get into the blind again. Conditions were close, but far from ideal. But with three days left in the early season and no improvement in sight, 
we doubled up on Ozonics to hunt the crosswind, hoping that no deer came from the east. The deer began moving early from the south-southeast. Everything was perfect so far. A couple of young bucks arrive and begin to fight and play. And moments later, they look east. My heart sinks, and the giant appears. Canadian Whitetail has also been brought to you by Slick Trick Broadheads and Dual Game Calls, Glendale, the biggest and toughest 3D targets in the universe, Bog Pod, more than just a shooting rest, Raculator, score your trophy fast, easy, and accurate, and by Scott Archery and Custom Bow Equipment. On a crosswind, on our downwind side, the creek buck had made an appearance swinging to try and get the wind coming directly east just like an old buck would. But as he approached, we could see that our gamble had worked as he entered the shooting lane. It was hard to believe Rochelle was about to get a second chance, surreal actually. Then moments later, while still not broadside for a good shot, he snaps his head up as a truck and a trailer rumble down the road over 500 yards behind us. Still thinking that the creek buck would calm down and Rochelle's shot was still coming. The buck looks further back as a couple of deer trot in off the field. He turns and moves away, still with no shot. seconds turn to hours as we hope things calm down, but as confused and alert as the giant looks, heartbreak begins to creep in, as I get a gut feeling of what's about to happen, as more deer move in off the field. And it happens. One buck bounds by, and they all fall in line, like dominoes, and with them taking Rochelle's second chance as he exits, however not spooked and obviously unsure why he's leaving with the other deer. With nowhere else to be and knowing that the buck didn't know what had happened, we stayed put on the one in a million chance that he'd want to head back out to the field. And 16 minutes later to the east, down the same trail, we look and realize that Rochelle had just overcame Powerball lottery odds and the creek buck was coming back through. This time he was broadside, no deer behind him, and everything was perfect. This segment has been brought to you by Nocturnal Lighted Knox. Simple, string activated, and now you can get 15% off all items by entering promo code WHITETAIL15 at Faradine.com. Nocturnal Lighted Knox. Switch on accuracy and let it glow. After a second heartbreaking encounter this same evening, the giant 200 plus inch creek buck was coming back through.
Stopping to check the wind one last time, he decides all is okay and begins to move into Rochelle's shooting lane. This time there were no mistakes, and after meeting with Steve on the road and concluding that it was a double lung shot, we headed in to look for the buck. Right across the little channel here you can see the nocturnal blinking on the edge of the bush, and it's sticking straight up in the air, so I've got a feeling there might be a deer there. There he is. Oh my gosh. He's piled in there, eh? Holy. Oh, look at him. Uh, I don't even really know what to say. I, I can't believe I got a got my shot at him tonight. I sat for him last year and this year was had its ups and downs to I did take a shot at him and missed and was really heartbroken over that. <sighs> Here he is. I got my shot at him and I don't even know what to say. He's gorgeous. That deer that deer is insane. I'm so happy. This deer, well tonight, this deer has been an absolute dream to hunt. You never see nothing bad about the deer. Tonight, tonight was a little bit more of a frustrating night. We filmed a hundred episodes. My instant thought was that's the absolute most heartbreaking thing I've ever seen or filmed in the deer woods. And we talked about getting out then too, hey, just sneaking out. Yeah. We all had about an hour left, we stuck in there. We didn't make a mistake tonight, but we took a big chance. And uh, I actually brought every Ozonics we had, I took mine and the cameraman in, and we hooked them up in front of the window because that stand is set up for a south wind, and we didn't have that tonight, we had a west wind. He had been coming from the south, or from the southeast, so I thought on a west wind, we're just gonna, you know, cut it shy and, and be okay. You know, he came right through, not from where we were expecting him on the trail camera, but we weren't gonna sit tonight. And with three days left, we thought we would try to stack everything in our favor, crawl in there, and uh, it's incredible. I mean, you know, I don't have to say anything. Just watch, just watch it again. This hunt actually started a couple of years ago. We've known this deer for, well, we've known him for five years actually. And what transpired was last year, you know, through producing the show the last seven years, and Steve and I are always so busy, and I've got kids at home, and Rochelle hasn't had a lot of chance to hunt because we're out every day and. We still have a family to keep together, and that's largely fell on Rochelle. And this buck, last year, he turned out really good. We had a look at him, we thought he was a 180 inch deer. He was close to home, and he was huntable. So we, me and Steve decided, okay, this is Rochelle's buck. She doesn't ever get time to hunt. She's shot a lot of really nice deer, but she's never shot a giant. Here's her chance. And she yes. sat every south wind all year. I'm happy for you. Thank you, honey. All right, look at that. That's some kind of deer, eh? He really, really grew some tines here, eh? Yep, that's why nice. I blew up this year. Uh, so did the mass. Yeah, big time. What a buck. Words cannot describe how proud I am of Rochelle. With as many ups and downs that a hunt can have, she stayed positive and dedicated to closing the deal until the very last minute. And what an opportunity for us, for us all, Steve, Rochelle, and myself, to get to watch and witness such an amazing animal. A truly world-class deer live, grow, and thrive in such a high-pressure area. And it's all thanks to the equally impressive landowners that allow us and all hunters access to their properties so we can enjoy the passion that hunting is. Congratulations, Rochelle. In this day and age with so many looking for instant success and easy rewards, for you that was definitely not the case. And you've earned every memory that you have when it comes to hunting, watching, and eventually taking a truly legendary whitetail.